The idea of taking to the water on something resembling a motorbike has been around since the 1950s. It took a couple of decades to perfect the technology, but after the first stand-up models appeared on the U.S. market in 1973, the concept really took off. And by the mid-90s, personal watercraft sales were the fastest growing category in the recreational boating market. We've come a long way since then. Today's personal watercraft go by many names. Wave runners, jet skis, sea dews, and tiger sharks, or PWCs for short, and they all mean fun. They're fast, powerful, and easy to operate, but they're also involved in many boating accidents and injuries. So it's important for all users to know how to operate them safely and to know the rules about personal watercraft operation. Hi, I'm Dave Johansson. And I'm Angela Johansson. And today we're here to show you the essential things you need to know to improve your safety on the water with your personal watercraft. We're here at Folsom Lake, along with Sacramento State Aquatic Center, which is exactly the kind of place you should take a boating safety class before taking your PWC out on the water. The leading cause of personal watercraft accidents is inexperience, so we strongly recommend taking a course. You'll find information on where to find classes at the end of this video. And there's another very important thing to note before we get started. Beginning in 2018, anyone operating a PWC or powerboat of any kind will be required to pass an approved boating safety course and carry a boater education card. The law will be phased in according to age group, so check the Boating and Waterways website for details. Okay, we've got a lot of great information to cover, so let's get started. We're going to be covering the three areas of boating safety. Personal safety, boat safety, and water safety. You ready, Angela? Ready, Dave. See you at the dock. OK, first up for personal safety. As with any kind of water-related activity, you have to be comfortable with the idea of ending up in the water. But even if you're extremely confident around water, wearing a U.S. Coast Guard approved life jacket, specifically for personal watercraft use, is required by law. Everyone on board a personal watercraft must wear a life jacket at all times. Absolutely, because more than 75% of drownings could have been prevented if the victim had been wearing a life jacket. So it's simple, never ever go on the water without your life jacket. And that goes for anyone being towed behind a personal watercraft. And when choosing your life jacket, make sure it's the right one for your size, your weight, and is U.S. Coast Guard approved for use on personal watercraft. So make sure you check the label. Okay, so in addition to your life jacket, another essential piece of safety gear is your whistle. Keep it attached to your life jacket at all times so you can signal in case of an emergency. Five or more whistle blasts means it's an emergency. Next, it's a good idea to always wear some protective eyewear, such as goggles or sunglasses with a tether, to protect your eyes against water spray, bugs, and glare. Also highly recommended is a wetsuit to protect against sun, wind, and cold water. It's important to remember that even on warm days like this, sudden contact of the skin with cold water, even water up to 77 degrees, can quickly lead to cold water shock and the loss of movement, which can be fatal. Other common boating conditions, such as engine noise, lack of drinking water, wave movement, and sun can lead to fatigue and disorientation, with potentially serious consequences. So always carry plenty of water and don't overdo it out there. And always use plenty of high SPF sunscreen. You can get a sunburn on the water even on an overcast day. All right, let's look at just a few more clothing requirements. When it comes to footwear, choose booties, deck, or tennis shoes, which will provide good traction and protection for your feet from underwater hazards. Some people like to wear gloves for improved grip and comfort. I like the open-fingered kind that weightlifters use. And finally, a helmet. Collisions are by far the most common type of accident and head injuries are among the most serious. So along with your life jacket, this is the most important life-preserving piece of gear to wear on the water. In addition to plenty of liquids, be sure to take along some snacks, such as power bars, to keep your strength up. And when I say liquids, that doesn't include alcoholic beverages of any kind. Leave them behind on shore to enjoy later. There's no place for them on the water. So that pretty much covers it. So let's review what you need to remember about personal safety. Always wear an appropriate U.S. Coast Guard approved life jacket. Always carry a whistle. 
Wear eye protection such as goggles or sunglasses. Wear a wetsuit to avoid cold water immersion. Wear booties, deck shoes, or tennis shoes for traction and protection. And gloves for grip. Wear a helmet. Always stay hydrated. And never take alcohol on the water. Up next, boat safety. What you need to know about your personal watercraft before you set out on the water. Today's PWCs come in three main styles. Stand up, sit down sport class for one or two people, and sit down for three to four people. They all work in pretty much the same way, but whichever one you're using, you need to be aware of some of the basic things about how personal watercraft work and how to operate them. If you're new to PWCs, never just power up and head out onto the water without knowing how to boat safely and handle emergencies. So in addition to watching this video, take an on the water course. And it's important not to lend out your PWC to inexperienced friends. Three out of four PWC accidents involve someone who borrows or rents a PWC. But before we get to the mechanical stuff, a quick word about legal requirements. You have to be at least 16 years old to operate a PWC alone. The only exception is if you're between the ages of 12 to 15 and are accompanied by someone 18 years or older on a PWC designed to carry at least two people. Also, just like your car, your PWC must be registered with the Department of Motor Vehicles. You must carry the registration with you when underway and the registration or CF number must be visible on your craft in accordance with DMV regulations. If you are operating on lakes or freshwater rivers, you must also have Quagga Zebra Muscle Fee stickers on your PWC next to the registration stickers. In some areas, you may also need to get your PWC inspected for these invasive critters. Okay, so now let's get to know our watercraft. The most important safety feature on all models is the cutoff switch, which must be attached to the operator by a lanyard. If the rider falls off, the cutoff switch engages and either shuts off the engine or puts it in idle mode, causing it to circle slowly in place. It's a good idea to carry a spare lanyard with you at all times. Here's the other essential safety equipment that you must have on board. A Coast Guard approved fire extinguisher, good for gasoline and oil fires. On older PWCs, a backfire flame arrester that is clean and well secured. Visual distress signals such as signal flares, a phone or VHF radio, an anchor and tow line, a basic first aid kit, and a toolkit for minor repairs. It's also a good idea to have an air horn. Now before you set out, it's really important to ventilate the engine compartment to clear any fumes that may have built up during storage or transportation. Open all storage spaces and the seat for at least four minutes before starting the engine and after refueling. And speaking of refueling, you should fuel your PWC while it's on the trailer in the parking lot or at a gas station. If you need to refuel on the beach, use a rag to catch any spill and try to do it away from the water. Be careful not to overfill as gasoline expands as it warms. Now when you're on the water, you don't want to run out of gas. Pay attention to your fuel level, especially if you're planning on traveling far from the launch site. The one-third rule is a good way to go. A third of the tank outbound, a third of the tank for your return, and a third for reserve in case of an emergency. Before you get your PWC in the water, always check it for damage. Make sure the hole isn't damaged and that the engine latch, storage compartment cover, and gas and oil caps are all secure. Also make sure the PWC is in good working order. Check that the start stop button works, the cutoff switch works, your fire extinguisher is charged and secure, and the backfire flame arrestor is clean and secure. Now here's when you need to put on your mechanics hat for a bit. Be sure to check that the spark plug cables are secure. Hose connections are tight and not cracked or leaking. The bilge is drained and the plugs are in place and secure. The jet pump is not fouled or clogged. The throttle springs back after being pressed. And the steering mechanism moves easily. And finally, a word about transporting your PWC. Your trailer also needs to be registered with DMV and fully functional in terms of its lights, the hitch, the tires, and the tie downs. And of course, the PWC's gas cock must always be in the off position out of the water. Okay, well that's quite a lot to remember. So let's quickly review the main points of boat safety. Be sure to observe all legal requirements including age limits, boater card, and registration. 
Always keep the lanyard attached to your left wrist to ensure cutoff switch activation in case you become separated from your watercraft. Carry all essential safety equipment in working order. Ventilate the engine and storage compartments before operating. Check for hull and other damage. Conduct a complete pre-operation check of the engine, the pump, and control mechanisms. And check that your trailer is registered and in good condition. Now that you're confident that your watercraft is in good condition and you're equipped to deal with any emergencies, we're ready to talk about water safety, including the rules of the road and how to deal with changing weather and water conditions. All kinds of boating activities carry accident risks, but when you add the speeds that most PWCs are capable of to the equation, the risk of serious accidents and injuries becomes so much greater than those of larger boats. That's right. And that's why it's so important to know and abide by the navigation rules, or as they're known, the rules of the road. There are three main situations that you need to know how to negotiate around water traffic. First, approaching another boat head on. When two boats meet head on, each must keep to the right, or in nautical terms, starboard. Second, crossing. When the paths of two boats intersect, just like a car in an intersection, the boat to the right, the stand-on vessel, continues straight on a steady course. The giveaway vessel should slow and turn to starboard if necessary and pass behind the stand-on vessel. And third, when you overtake another boat from behind, you are the giveaway vessel. The boat being overtaken should hold course and speed. Pass with care on the right or left of the stand-on vessel. The main purpose of navigational rules is to prevent accidents. You must do whatever possible to avoid a collision. Maintaining a safe speed will allow you to take proper and effective actions. Remember, operating a PWC is not like riding a motorcycle because when you release the throttle on most PWCs, you lose steering ability and have no brakes to help you stop. It may take several hundred feet after throttle release to come to a complete stop. Unless your PWC has an off-throttle steering system, you must be ready to apply power and steer away from a person or another boat or hazard. Always take time to practice stopping and steering with an instructor in a safe, clear waterway before going out on your own or carrying passengers. When casting off, which is leaving the dock or shore, check that the lanyard is attached to your left wrist or life jacket. Check that the fuel cock is in the on position. Check the steering and throttle as you slowly ease away from the dock and always check your surroundings, especially for swimmers and other boats. And when you return to shore, slow to the lowest possible speed as you approach the landing site. Also check the water depth. Before your PWC touches the ground, be ready to get off and push it to shore or to its mooring site. When you're underway, be sure at all times to pay attention to navigational aids such as buoys and signs, especially those that read no wake and five miles per hour. Never have tunnel vision. Always keep a sharp lookout around you for people or hazards in the water and other boats. Never operate your PWC in less than 18 inches of water or in water containing debris or weeds in order to avoid damage to your jet pump impeller. Also avoid rocky areas, jetties, and strong currents. Striking any object at more than a few miles per hour can cause severe injuries or death. You should also avoid shipping channels when possible. And if you can't avoid them, cross them carefully. Always watch and listen for all boat traffic and keep a wide distance from other boats or persons in the water. Personal watercraft have become a very popular way to tow water skiers or tubers. But you must have a three-person PWC, which can seat the operator, the observer holding a water ski flag, and a skier. The observer must be over 12 years old and must know the standard tow sport hand and flag signals to communicate the status of the person being towed to other boaters. Now many PWC accidents happen when operators attempt to imitate some of the moves they've seen professionals performing at watercraft sporting events. These maneuvers and tricks may look like fun, but they're very risky, dangerous, and also illegal. Under California boating law, you can be cited for reckless or negligent operation. These moves include tag and turn. This means making sharp and wild turns close to each other. 
closely overtaking another vessel at high speeds, wake jumping within 100 feet of another vessel, and following other boats so closely that you don't have time to avoid a collision or your PWC's performance is affected by the other boat's weight. If you're caught in bad weather, you should reduce your speed and head to the nearest safe landing area. If the water becomes choppy, head into the waves at a 45 degree angle. If in a worst case scenario, your PWC capsizes, write it the way the manufacturer recommends. Look for the label with this information on the back of the PWC. If your watercraft has stalled and will not restart, wait a few minutes for a flooded engine or clogged fuel line to clear. Do not attempt to repair the engine on the water. If you can't restart the engine, stay with the vessel until help comes. Wave your arms, use a whistle, air horn, or other signaling device to attract attention. Make sure that you've learned in advance how to use your fire extinguisher. If you can't reach the fire extinguisher, swim away from the vessel to prevent injury in case of an explosion. All right, so just a few more notes on PWC regulations, accident reporting, and codes of conduct on the water. It's illegal to operate a PWC before sunrise and after sunset. A boating accident causing more than $500 of damage must be reported to boating and waterways within 10 days. A formal report of a death or missing person must be filed within 48 hours. And if an injury requires more than first aid, you must file a formal report with DVW within 48 hours. Always respect wildlife. Beyond the surf zone off California's beaches, it's not uncommon to encounter whales. And if you do, steer clear, both for your own protection and out of respect for the animal. Local jurisdictions along the California coastline and inland waterways may prohibit or restrict personal watercraft to certain locations. It is your responsibility to check with authorities to know the regulations and ordinances particular to areas where you want to operate. Many areas along the California coast allow personal watercraft use when they are more than 1,000 feet from the shoreline. Always check with the local marinas and lifeguards about access and water hazards. Another way to respect the environment is to leave no trace. Don't litter. And also be aware of your noise levels. Be polite and limit noise by not boating in one place for too long. Before you set out, be sure to file a float plan so that someone back on shore knows where you're going and when you plan to return. And once again, it bears repeating, no alcohol or drugs on the water. Okay, let's review what we've learned about water safety. Learn and observe the rules of the road. Maintain safe speeds to avoid collisions. Learn how to cast off and return to shore slowly and safely. Pay attention to navigational aids such as buoys and signs. Keep a sharp lookout. Observe safe practices when towing a skier. Never make dangerous moves. Learn how to deal with choppy waves, a capsized PWC, a stalled engine, or engine fire. Know the legal requirements for reporting accidents. Respect the environment. File a float plan. And never take alcohol or drugs on the water. Whichever kind of personal watercraft you choose, whether it's the single stand-up kind or one that can accommodate the whole family, you'll have a lot of fun adventures if you learn to treat the PWC just like other boats, with skill and respect. Check out the DBW website for information on finding boating safety classes. There's also a great PWC quiz there that you can take to test your skills on personal watercraft safety. It's a fun exercise for the whole family. We'd like to thank the Sacramento State Aquatic Center and California State Parks Folsom Lake Recreation Area for hosting us today. And on behalf of the Division of Boating and Waterways, we wish you many safe and fun-filled adventures with your PWC. Hey Angela, I got a quiz question for you. Okay. When is it okay to go on the water without your life jacket? Gee, I don't know Dave, I'm guessing maybe never. Happy, Happy boating, boating everyone! everyone.